In this episode, I leave the north coast of Viti Levu at Voli Voli Resort and sail northeast across the Bly Waters to the northern end of the Yasawa group of islands, the most northwest islands in Fiji, and then cruise down them before returning to Vunda Point Marina on the southwest side of Viti Levu to end my tour of Fiji this season. The crossing of the Bly Waters was 50 nautical miles, my longest day sail, so I needed to leave as early as I had decent light to avoid many reefs and then maintain an average of five knots to do the passage in 10 hours to arrive in daylight to negotiate the final reefs and anchor. I described this exhilarating day sail in a series of video clips. So it's Saturday the 14th of October. I have decided Rather than just go around the top of VT Levu and down the west side, which has very little wind, I'm going to head to the Yasawa Islands and go down them instead. So, we've already been on the go for two hours. We've made it through the first set of reefs. There's a second we have to avoid, third, fourth we have to go through a narrow channel, and then the fifth as we come into the islands. We're going to this island, Yasawa, at the very top here. And we are doing what? five to six knots, which is what we need to get in before it gets dark. Obviously it's necessary to avoid the reefs and anchor. And so here's our setup. We have the full main up in all its glory. We've got pretty much dead downwind. We've got the jib pulled out to windward, technically starboard. And we have the stay sail absolutely cranked tight to just try to stop the rolling a little bit. You can see we're going dead downwind here. It's a gorgeous day, you couldn't ask for more, except the wind is not as hard as, blowing as hard as it's supposed to. That's Viti Levu back behind us where we came from today. And got three fishing lines out, you can see all the clouds. They promise wind, but um, hasn't happened yet. So. Got a motor, which is a bummer, but eventually maybe this will fill in and then we can just sail. Oh joy, we're finally able to turn the engine off, still doing five, pushing five and a half knots, and that's enough to get the job done. See there's a reasonable breeze behind us, supposed to build all day. So that would be really nice. We're rolling pretty badly in the swell here, but no big deal, we can live with that. Everything's working well. And we're pulling along nicely, sort of on a mm, uh, slightly dead downwind broad reach fix. All right, I think this is a good opportunity to have a shot at explaining how the wind vane works, in this case, a Pacific wind pilot. And the first principle is that the vane should be pointed straight into the wind that weight at the bottom there, counteracting it, and that's not happening right now because we've got a little weather helm, but here she comes maybe. Anyway, once she's straight up in the wind, that means we're on course. There, we're almost there. And then if one of these way, ooh, there we go the other way, so it's gone to leeward and it's gonna bring us back. But when one of these waves catches us and we go slewing to the starboard like that, you see the vane gets pushed over. That moves the stainless steel rod here, which is the rod that broke north of the Galapagos, right at the weak point of the threads there. That rod activates a bevel gear down at the bottom here. That bevel gear turns the shaft of this propeller, of this uh, of this rudder, this little rudder, very slightly. And that, the force of the water across that rudder, when it's turned very slightly, well, it's going there, right there, forces it way out to the side. There we go, way out to the side. When that happens, this head on the other end of that rudder gets pulled way over to port, like that. And then this line coming through here Dyneema line, very strong, goes first through this pulley and to the tiller via these chains and that pulls the tiller to starboard and that brings us back on course. 
done exactly the opposite right now. Vane's gone the other way. Uh, it only lasts for a short while. And then the rudder goes to port. The rudder head goes to starboard. Pulls this line over to port. And that pulls the tiller across to get us back on course. It's a wonderfully elegant system. Beautifully engineered in the case of the Pacific One Pilot. Where we're sailing almost dead downwind got full sail up got about maybe 20 knots and it's handling it perfectly and just to complete the explanation of how the wind pilot works that orange red looking knurled knob there allows you to turn the entire shaft of the wind vane itself to turn it clockwise it would turn us to port if you were to turn it anti-clockwise, it would head us up into the wind, turning us to stop. And boom! To do that, you can either sit at the back there and turn that knob with your hand, or you can pull these lines to conveniently turn it. And then up at this end, we have fine adjustment. You just move this chain from one link or another link that gives you a couple of degrees up or down. Move one link that way, you go a couple of degrees up. Move one link this way, you go a couple of degrees down. Very cool system. The final little piece of the puzzle, you can adjust the tension in these Dyneema lines over here, a little pulley uh, purchase system, these two rings, and up at the back here, have two lines supporting this pulley. One is a pretty thin line and it's a sacrificial line because the forces involved here can be up to 500 pounds. A really strong pull on here when it is pulling the boat back on course. But I have another line, slightly thicker, that's backing it up. And I have the same thing on the other side, a thin line that's taking the effort right now. When that wears out, because unfortunately it runs on the combing here, then this one will take over. All right, so it's now 11 o'clock. We've been at this for four hours. We had two and a half hours of motoring and now we've been sailing and it was just getting too much. We we're surfing at 7.5 knots, which is about full speed. And that's just putting too much stress on the rigging. So I've taken in a reef. That's the first reef on the main. You can see roughly speaking, the size of the main is now roughly the size of the jib. So we're pretty well balanced. Pretty soon we'll have to go to the second reef. You might wonder what all these extra lines are. One of them is the topping lift, of course, and the other is an extra Dyneema line that I had to back up the topping leaf, uh, topping lift because of an accident that killed a Kiwi sailor a couple of weeks ago where the topping lift broke and the boom smashed into the cockpit. You see two other very thin lines coming down. Those are the Dutchman system and the one on the left is very slack because I control that part of the sail by reefing it and the one on the four is broken so once I have a calm anchorage I can replace that no big deal it's still easy to get the main sail down and put away now, it's half an hour later at 11 30 as forecast the wind has built up We're solidly into the 20s now still getting overpowered so we have reef number two and pretty soon we will be triple reefed but it's still fun we're cruising along nicely and we're doing what are we doing six seven on a surf yeah it's nice thought i'd show you how much variation there is in the course when the wind vane is steering we're nominally doing about 290 so here we're headed up too much wind vane is fighting its way back Whoa, there we go almost too much over the other way and so we slew around between about 280 at the extreme there's the extreme and 310 so what's that 30 degrees so 15 degrees each way seems like a lot but most of the time we're around 290 something holding course very nicely. See our desired course 
to our lay, lay point, which is the island of Isawa up here, and the gap we have to go through the reef. So we are right on it. I could see this reef in the distance, the little round one there. This other one I probably won't be able to see, but oh well. We avoided it, that's what matters. Well, while we're having this absolutely gorgeous sailing with beautiful blue ocean and white caps everywhere and the wind vane steering happily and we're cruising along at six to seven knots, I thought I'd show you a few more things around the boat. Here's the two papaya that Inoki at Makangai gave me. And what do we got else? We're pretty much out of fresh fruit. That's the last half of the last pineapple. And we're sitting up in the standing. These are the wires that connect the auxiliary solar panels. But I've actually just connected them all because I didn't like the way I set them up. They weren't working right. There's the fishing pole, the robust one, and the light one over there. But I don't actually use them much anymore. Pretty much it's all hand lines. Here's one of them over here. And it's set up with a little bungee cord and a clothes peg. And the fish hits and pops the clothes peg off. That makes a little noise so that I know it happened. And the bungee cord absorbs the initial shock before the line comes tight. Hopefully it doesn't break. These uh, fenders here are for when the stick gets knocked out and the uh, solar panel comes banging down so it doesn't break itself. We've got a whole bunch of little bits of line just for this, that and the next thing. That white thing there is my EPIRB that's on a hydrostatic release. So that's the EPIRB that will float to the surface if sea change were to sink and would signal that the sea change has gone down. Uh, tied next to it is the hoist for the uh, motor and a gaff for a big fish, but I've never used that. And there's our two outboards, the miserable Mercury and the faithful Yamaha. We've got a solar light up here and a fish net. Oh, we're getting getting overpowered again here. Yo, I just saw eight knots. Did you see that? No, you didn't. Just went away. There we are, 7.7. .7. Time for another reef, I think. And indeed, <clears throat> there is the third reef in. Sail's looking good. And it's probably slightly smaller than the jib at this point so we're very nicely balanced and we're not clawing our way back upwind to starboard all the time uh, we're still doing a respectable speed let's see what we got here six five and maybe if we get a surf there's a little baby surf yeah nice Anywhere from five to six is more than fine to get us there at four o'clock. Oh, now it's one o'clock. Uh oh! And, wow, things were getting pretty wild and crazy. So the next step down is to start furling the jib. So I've taken a couple of turns on the furler there. That's gotten us a little bit more under control. But uh, yeah, it's still a pretty wild ride. Um, if we don't get to the reef that we need to go through, which will give us much calmer conditions in terms of the waves at least, in the next hour, then I will have to take the main down. But I want to try to avoid doing that. We'll see. Oh, now it's two o'clock. I've got the main all the way up against the spreaders to try to stop us from heading up too much. And I've got the jib more than half furled. And conditions are pretty spectacular. You know, the waves trying to break behind us here. We're still doing six to seven knots, which is excellent. 
and we are headed straight at this passage through this chaotic reef up ahead here. Should be pretty straightforward. And we've done so well that we are going to get in at 4 o'clock if all holds rather than 5, which was my hoped for plan. So, very happy with that. 9 hours, average of 5.5 knots. Probably the best day sail of my life. Simply a wonderful, wonderful ride. And finally we are down to Triple Reef Main. Stay sail now working. Jib put away. It's amazing how perfectly the spinnaker pole that I found in Anacortes, Washington fits the size of our rig here. Just perfect. It's pretty crazy and rough now. We're sort of broad reaching, beam reaching, and the waves are chaotic because it's getting shallow. It's about 500 feet versus 3,000 earlier. We're getting tossed around all over the place, but we're about to go into this reef system. It's about five miles to get through it. And then, oopsie. Everything should calm down a little bit. And we made it. This is the final passage, Tamasua Passage. This is Sawa Ilao Island, where there's some fantastic caves that you can swim in. And man, was that a wild ride, that last section. Sheesh! Still just blasting through here. Here's the chart of the anchorage at Sawa Ilao Island, just south of the northernmost Yasawa Island, and the satellite view of it using my Anchor Alarm app, which also shows our track inwards. The locals in the village to the north, Nabukera, were burning the grassy areas above the village. Sawa Ilao is very pretty, with excellent snorkeling on the coral right next to us. And here are the details of the five islands I visited along the Yasawa group. Well, it's five o'clock and I made it to Sawu Ilao. This is the village of Nabu Keru. They're burning the fields as is often the case. And there are four big catamarans here. And unfortunately the light is fading on me. There's clouds coming so it doesn't look as pretty as it could. But there's some nice looking little beaches and then there's this monster hill and to go around to get in and back in here you can't see it but back in there there's a set of caves that you can swim in so hopefully I get to do that back in there at one of the little beaches is where the steps go up and down into the cave and lo and behold gate was not locked. So I had it all myself this morning. Now the cruise ship has arrived. That will make things very busy around here. And so I'm leaving. I'm going to go through that gap over there and to the famous Blue Lagoon and Taviwa Island where David's place used to be where we visited in 2003. Oh, it's another gorgeous day. Just motoring slowly out of this bay at the south end of Yasawa Island. Anchorage back there is called Sawa Ilao, where the caves are. And there's all this rocky shore here and then the burnt hills. Boy, they burnt the whole hill behind the village yesterday. And now I'm going to be on a rather gusty, but at least not so wavy, leeward side going down to Blue Lagoon. pleasant trip. This is the famous Blue Lagoon anchorage off Nanuya Lailai Island with a resort of the same name and Taviwa Island to the northwest of the anchorage. And here's the Google satellite view. Oh, this anchorage is known as Blue Lagoon. This is Nanuya Island Resort, Boathouse Resort. And it's a truly gorgeous spot. Fire come through here. This 
It's been a little worrisome for the resort. And lots of places are burning the land. At the resort, I had the extraordinary good luck of meeting Glenn and Pat on the right, who have lived on their boat, Northern Rose, for 23 years. Glenn is a retired Yanmar mechanic who helped me repeatedly with engine issues. And their good friends Matt and Elizabeth on the left have lived on their boat, Rubicon, for 26 years and are similarly experienced and helpful. Here's the local kids going to school in the school boat. How cool is that? On the left is Saibo, a catamaran with Sai and Bo on it, who I twice joined for kite surfing at Taviwa Island. And on the right is Northern Rose, Glen and Pat's home-built steel boat. And here is Rubicon, Matt and Liz's 1978 fiberglass boat. Here is the Blue Lagoon anchorage seen from the resort, with sea change in the foreground. Here I replaced the alternator that died a few days earlier with a spare I had the unusual foresight to have brought along. Well, it's easy to see why this has been called the Blue Lagoon Anchorage, apart from the fact that the movie was shot here. It is an absolutely gorgeous spot. Lovely blue water, nice clear anchorage, pleasant resort, good kite surfing. And a view from the top of the hill is the anchorage, across where I was kite surfing. Taviwa Island, where Davis Place was. See all the reefs that I had to come through down from Sawa Ilao. I accompanied my four new friends on a walk over the island past burnt areas and cassava plots to Lowe's Tea House, a delightful little place where we had lunch of eggs and sausages followed by her famous freshly made yummy chocolate donuts. There were lots of comings and goings here, including this supply ship that unloaded all sorts of supplies, and this little cruise ship that works with the neighboring Blue Lagoon Resort. Well, it's Thursday, the 17th of October. Had a very good time in Blue Lagoon. Just see the Nanuya Resort. And there, about 15 boats uh, by the time I was done. All sorts of antics going on. Lots of good kite surfing, cruise ships coming and going, super yachts. Couldn't get the engine to start this morning. One of the other cruisers helped me get it going and running. It just had to bleed the system. It was one of the bleeding tubes was open. There's the northern Yasawas going all the way up there. Continuing to head south, and this completely covered with the acacia bush that is a complete plague throughout the Marquesas in French Polynesia and here as well. And we are headed south to this island behind there, I believe, to a bay called Somo Somo Bay. Should be a nice easy sail. All I've got is the jibber. And I am anchored in an absolutely gorgeous spot. Beautiful clear sand here, 15 feet deep for anchor, and then fall back into this little cove. There's coral right behind me, so I've got an anchor along. And I'm forgetting the name of this bay, so I'm going to have to add that. The next night I anchored in an isolated bay on Naviti Island, surrounded by coral, and again had my anchor dragged during the night, but by the time I had gotten up in response to the anchor alarm, it had reset itself. And finally, the anchorage at Drawakwa Island, near the Barefoot Manta Ray Resort, where I had dinner and intended to free dry dive with the manta rays in the pass on the north end of the island the next morning. Now it's Wednesday, 18th of October, and I'm at Drawakwa Island, where manta rays are supposed to come through the uh, the gap between these two islands, between this island and the Viti. I'm gonna go see if that's true tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, look at this monster catamaran. Holy smokes! And the boat that brings people to the resorts, much like the one that we came out in 2003. Just hovering here in 
picking up and dropping off lots and lots of people from the resort. And down there is a guy trying to kite off the back of his catamaran. I'm not sure it's windy enough where he is. And then over here is quite a nice little beach. If I just catch a fish, I would go barbecue it on the beach. After a lovely sunset, the forecast that night showed the possibility of a tropical storm forming far north of us and east of the Solomons. The next morning, after an equally lovely sunrise, the American GFS model was forecasting it moving south and east towards Fiji, while the European ECMWF model was forecasting it moving south and west towards Vanuatu. I decided I did not like the even remote chance of facing it, so left to sail back to the refuge of Wunder Point Marina. Well, it's Thursday, 19th of October, and we're well on our way back from the Sawas. You can barely, well, actually, you can't see them. There's way back there. And these ones down here are the Mamanukas, through to Musket Cove over here. Oh, I should really zoom in. Still can't see Musket Cove. Barely see Musket Cove. Anyway, it's been a lovely day's sail as forecast. This catamaran called Cinnamon left about an hour after us, and after five hours, it's finally caught us. But he's sailing conservatively. He's got two reefs in the main, and then the Genoa out. five to six sometimes seven knots the whole way it's just an absolutely gorgeous day for sailing the ecmwf model turned out to be correct and lola became the earliest category five cyclone recorded in the south pacific causing devastation in vanuatu it then continued south and merged with a low coming off australia to produce a strong extra tropical storm that hit new zealand hard and hammered several boats sailing there, including a solo Frenchman who called for rescue off his trashed sailboat, shown here. I was glad to avoid Lola. In the next episode, after spending two weeks working on the standing rigging and other issues in Wunderpoint Marina, I sailed down to New Zealand.